Hey guys, it's Mike again with another video about Tough Mudder. And I'm going to attempt to answer some common questions that I get about Tough Mudder and other mud races, specifically as it relates to the risk of injury, um, where you're most likely to get injured, like which obstacles, who are most likely to get injured, and what are some of the common injury types, as well as what can you do to try to reduce your injury. Obviously, that'd be very important, right? So, I mean, just like with anything, obviously, you know, the, the easy answer for me to give you would be, gosh, you can get injured just getting in a car or, or walking down the street. But obviously, if you're going to do one of these mud races, and particularly tough mud, or, you know, many people think that's the king of these obstacle course races, you're going to have a, a high chance of injury because you're going to be putting your body through different types of tasks that you obviously don't do on a daily basis. I, I doubt very many people climb, you know, uh, up uh, a spider web or something like that, you know, in terms of the cargo rope, or you're trying to run up the side of a, a half pipe like on Everest, or, or you know, all the many things that you have to do on top of besides just running 12 miles a day. And a lot of people do that. I certainly don't. And if you do, I applaud you. But, uh, you know, who's most likely to get injured? Well, obviously, that's kind of an easy one as well, too. You know, it's those people who, you know, don't train maybe regularly, um, or who, aren't sure what to expect, or also those people who, you know, aren't really cautious when they should be. And we're going to talk about ways to reduce injury, you know, later, but that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that other people can't get injured. I don't, I mean, I have seen people on the, on the course, and I'm sure you have, if you've done these races that are, you know, six foot three, 220 pounds, absolutely ripped and shredded up, and they're laying on the side of the road, not because of anything they did wrong, it's just because they pulled a calf muscle or they fell the wrong way and they, they, you know, they sprained their knee. I mean, injuries can happen to anybody, no matter how well you train. The next time I, could, I do one of these races, I could go out and injure. I certainly hope that's not the case, but I recognize it is a possibility. You know, obviously you have to accept the risk of injury if you're going to be involved in one of these races, and that's obviously why, you know, Tough Mudder and the other races have you sign these waivers. So injury risk is certainly there. What are some of the obstacles that, that you can get injured on the most? I tell you, really, to be honest with you, again, it could happen anywhere, but it's those obstacles where you're, um, where I've seen the most are going over the Berlin walls, particularly the higher wall, the 12 foot wall, not recognizing on the other side how far the drop is. There's usually two sets of the, of the tall, thin, what they call Berlin walls, and you gotta climb up, pull yourself up, and then get down on the other side. There's an eight foot one, and then there's a, a 12 foot one. And the 12 foot one, I, I saw, I mean, last time we did it, somebody fell on the other side, boom, took out their knee, and they, they were getting helped off the course. Um, the other ones where you see some injuries that I have seen, and again, if you have other comments of where you've seen injuries, please share them in the comment section. Uh, trying to run up Everest on the side and then, you know, slipping because it gets pretty slippery with all the mud after a while, and then, you know, twisting the knee or something like that. Um, jumping too quickly down one of the higher obstacles like the hay pyramid or something like that. Believe it or not, it can certainly happen. It's very steep on the other side. Um, so it's just, not, I don't think there's any necessarily one obstacle so much as it is, you know, doing things again that you're not used to. The most common injuries that I've seen in these races have been uh, muscle strains and sprains of all kinds, uh, particularly, um, you know, you'd be surprised if you looked at some other videos, you heard me say this, your calves really get tested the most. And I mean, the last time I did Tough Mudder, um, you know, I, I felt like I pulled calf muscles multiple times and I've seen people that are in fantastic shape, much better than me, pull a calf muscle, I mean, you're done. You know, if it, if it happens to you, try to rub it out, give it a little bit of time. I waited five minutes uh, one time and I was able to, you know, keep going again, but it can happen anywhere. Calves, obviously twisted and sprained knees. Again, if you're falling the wrong way or you slip on something uh, the wrong way, it can happen. Um, and twisted ankles certainly can happen. Um, the other thing people often overlook is, you know, you need a lot of body strength with some of these exercises, particularly if you're trying to do it by yourself, you're trying to pull yourself up over one of the walls or something like that. You know, last time I did the tall Berlin wall, I felt like I kind of tweaked the check, chest muscle when I was pulling up and going over. So just kind of be aware of that, you know, shoulder strains, chest strains, you know, make sure you're stretching out before you do the race um, so that you can recognize it's not just all about your legs too. Um, and then also, if you're not going to wear gloves, I recommend that you do wear workout gloves or something. You're going to recognize, realize you're going to have a, a risk of abrasions. You're doing a lot of climbing on ropes or going through gravel, things of that nature, where you could get abrasions on your hands, your elbows, things like that. Um, when you do boa constrictor and you're crawling through the tunnels, a lot of times gravel and sand builds up in there. And so if you're going on your elbows, you're really going to get your, your knees and your elbows scraped up. You know, I have friends that wear 
knee pads to try to protect their knees. I don't do that. I, I you know I haven't found that that's really necessary, but some people swear by it, so you might want to um, do that as well too. What can you do to reduce your risk of injury? Obviously, if you can do some training beforehand, and that, that would be a good thing. I mean, recognize this is a 12-mile race here on average, and you've got about 25 obstacles to do. We're talking about Tough Mudder there, but and some other ones are a little bit shorter with more or less obstacles. But the concept is the same. If you can train beforehand, does that mean you have to be able to run 12 miles? I'll be honest with you. I can't sit, go out there and, and, and run 12 miles continuously and be happy about it. I, I would not do very good at all. But just recognizing that you should be able to at least – continuously run a mile or two and, and ideally you know I would say three to five if you can get into that range before the race you'll be fine usually every half mile or so there is an obstacle so you don't have to really ever run more than a mile or a mile and a half I think between obstacles but again just look at the course that you're going to do beforehand and prepare for that know what obstacles are coming up in which order and where they're at just get a general idea so you can have and then look and see what those obstacles are all about by watching either some of my videos or some of the other videos that are out there on YouTube and know what you're getting into. The other thing I recommend, like I said before, is that you do wear gloves on your hands, little workout gloves with the fingers cut off. I've seen work out very well for my friends and I, especially because of all the climbing and stuff that you're doing. Also, the types of shoes that you wear. I've got multiple videos on what shoes I recommend, um, but you certainly, I wouldn't think you want to go out there in hiking boots. You know, you want to go out there with a good uh, running shoe. Um, you know, I've recommended multiple ones. I'll put some links on here so that you can see it as well, too. And the final things I would have for you to try to reduce injury risk is don't be stupid. Be cautious. You know, if you're not familiar with an obstacle, you know, the, the, the point of Tough Mudder is that, as they say, is it's not th about the time that you're finishing under so much. It's just that you can finish the race. And so uh, be cautious, use your teammates, um, and then have confidence that you can do it. So be smart, not stupid. And, and like I said, use your teammates' help and you can get through it. So is there a risk of injury? Yes, there is definitely a risk of injury, but you can reduce the risk of injury if you're, you know, Follow some of these tips I've given you. And if you have tips to share, please share them with our group as well, too. Thanks for watching and God bless you.